Simon Romo is the Chief Children's Court Attorney for the New Mexico Children, Youth, and Families Department. Mr. Romo manages the legal staff for the Protective Services Division throughout the state of New Mexico. He has 22 years of experience with the Children, Youth, and Families Department and its predecessor agency. He is a certified National Child Welfare Law Specialist and member of the National Association of Counsel for Children and the American Bar Association. Mr. Romo has been licensed a licensed attorney in New Mexico since 1985. He also holds a master's degree in social work from New Mexico Highlands University. Chairwoman Woolsey, distinguished members of the subcommittee, thank you for allowing me to be here this morning to testify on behalf of children, youth, and families uh, from New Mexico. Uh, a little bit of context. From 2000 to 2005, the foreign-born population grew in New Mexico by 28 percent. The national average for the same period was approximately 18 percent. In New Mexico in 2005, the total population of the state was 1,887,200 people. Foreign-born residents numbered 168,000, or roughly 9 percent, of whom approximately 115,000, or 6 percent, were non-citizens. In 2005, only 10.5 percent of the foreign-born population in New Mexico was under 18, while more than half of that at the time, 53%, uh, almost 54% was of childbearing age between the ages of 18 to 44, and the great majority, almost 80%, was of working age. Today, of the foreign born in New Mexico, an estimated 40 to 55,000 are undocumented. The majority of children in New Mexico who have non-citizen parents were themselves born in the United States, and it is therefore likely that the majority of children affected by immigration enforcement operations are, in fact, U.S. citizens. Children of immigrants are at high risk for entering into the child welfare system. They are more likely to live in linguistic isolation, live in a single parent family, have a mother with less than a high school education, and be economically deprived. The Children, Youth, and Families Department currently has 18 non-citizen children in protective custody, a figure that has remained pretty much constant uh, throughout the past several years. The department has not been able to reliably track citizenship status of parents in our data system, but of the 2,300 children in care in New Mexico, it's estimated that a significant number have at least one parent who is not a U.S. citizen, given the high percentage of foreign nationals of childbearing age living in New Mexico. It is unknown how many of these children came into care as a, as a result of their parent being deported. Immigration raids and enforcement activities in New Mexico have been documented, though CYFD has not been notified to respond nor have any children come into custody as a direct result of these activities. The department is not informed of enforcement operations before they happen and so is not able to respond to children and assess for their safety in a timely manner. Instead, relatives, neighbors, friends, and community agencies have been absorbing the responsibility of caring for children left without parents. This lack of initial involvement of the state agency responsible for assuring the safety, permanency, and well-being of children places those who are separated from their parents at an additional risk of entering into the system later, as they are often shuffled around in unstable situations with minimal support and minimal resources. On November 16, 2007, the Office of Immigration and Customs Enforcement and the Department of Homeland Security released guidelines for identifying humanitarian concerns among administrative arrestees when conducting worksite enforcement operations. The new humanitarian guidelines put into ICE's policy regarding notifying appropriate social services agencies of worksite raids targeting more than 150 employees, but this has had a minimal effect on enforcement activities and may not be implemented effectively in New Mexico given that it's primarily a rural state. The department has not been contacted before or after any worksite operations in New Mexico to identify individuals requiring assistance as spelled out in the guidelines. Of particular concern to the department is trauma to children. The limitation of the humanitarian guidelines on the identification of individuals who've been, uh, who have dependent children places these uh, children in particular risk. While we've had few raids that have detained approximately 20 to 30 immigrants at a time, the most common practice that we see by ICE in New Mexico uh, is that it's, it's operating on a smaller scale uh, with increased presence in homes and on the streets of certain communities such as border towns and high population centers in which Latino families have been targeted. 
The times when children are most vulnerable to experiencing trauma as a result of immigration enforcement operations are those when a parent goes to the store and never comes back or when parents are taken away from their homes. The disruption of a safe holding environment and the separation of children from their caretakers can severely and permanently damage a child. Traumatic experiences such as these frequently lead to further negative relational, behavioral, and educational outcomes. The department does not generally find out about enforcement acti activities until after the fact, and it is therefore not able to respond to mitigate the negative effects on children. In terms of our recommendations, CYFD supports keeping immigrant families together, if at all possible, when there are no signs of active abuse or neglect. Immigration enforcement operations are inherently traumatic for children, and they need support. Immigrant enforcement activities are especially problematic in the child welfare system when the children are of an undocumented worker who is, de who is deported is a U.S. citizen. Existing ICE guidelines that emphasize keeping families together if the parent in question is the sole caretaker or if a child has special needs are not being uniformly implemented in New Mexico. The department believes that notice of enforcement operations should be required in all instances, regardless of the size of the employer workforce, to avoid causing trauma to even one child. Thank you, Chairwoman Woolsey.